Good morning, Mark Chameleons, and everyone joining us for the first time. Thanks for coming by and checking out the Mark Chameleon pre-market show on this special day, Juneteenth, where the market isn't open, but we're still going to talk all things Mark Chameleon with a very special guest. But before we get there, let's do this disclaimer, just so everyone knows, Mark Chameleon is not a registered investment advisor. Either is the guest who will be joining us, who you will be introduced to in a moment. But um, just read that disclaimer, and uh, now we're going to welcome a very special guest all the way from the deserts of Arizona, coming in, Jay Soloff. For those who don't know, Jay is a longtime friend of Market Chameleon in the community, a great trader from way back, now uh, writes quite a few newsletter, holds... Uh, Shows coffee and condors. I'm assuming that's when he's drinking coffee and doing I and condors. Jay Sol, how are you doing this morning, Jay? Wait, I am minute. doing well. That yeah, and, I, and I needed some coffee water. right when you said that. <laughs> oh, I thought it would look like a, a nice glass of red wine. I'm like, that's it's one a, way no, to it, start to it's, it's it's a beer glass, but uh, I didn't have another one to put in a cold, you know. That was the one that I, I quickly found this morning to put cold brew in. So <laughs> it was <laughs> So no uh, warm coffee in Arizona, I guess. It's, it's no, I do. I do. Stuff. I just like I was. I was. Uh, it's early out here, right? So uh, getting up at five in the morning, I didn't. I saw some uh, my kids asleep on the couch downstairs. I didn't want to grind beans, so it was a. It was a gesture of fatherhood that uh, I kept it quiet and just grabbed a cold brew and a glass and came upstairs. So <laughs> that that is that is a good father. <laughs> so just for those, I mean, it's been a while since we've been on together for the chameleons who are joining us for the first time or anyone who's popped in via YouTube because we're on YouTube live as well. Just uh, let everyone know uh, your background, your history, what you're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I uh, back in the you know dark ages of of floor trading, uh, I was a market maker on the CBOE. Um, obviously, actually, CBOE still has live floor trading, a uh, different location, though. This was in the old CBOE building uh, back when, you know, pretty much all the volume went through the floors. And I I learned, I cut my teeth in the uh, SPX pit. That's I was a clerk there, learned really all about volatility and all that sort of thing, and then uh, was a market maker in single stock options amazon was probably the big one that i was i was a market maker in back when amazon was just books and music um got into the so so when when things started going to the software side of things i got into uh market making software basically that took me to wall street basically off the floors working with traders on how to create a market making product that was um, you know, sort of cater to American markets going, going electronic. Um, yeah. So th that's, you know, those are the early days. We'll, we'll fast forward to, uh, you know, did some crazy things in between, like got an MBA and moved to Arizona and got married and did some of that crazy life stuff. And then got into financial, uh, financial publishing because there really wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of investment type positions in Arizona, right? That's not, not known for uh, it's, you know, actually now there's, there's quite a few like brokerages out here, headquarters and there, or like secondary offices. There are more things now, but back in when I moved here, I mean, it was like, you can work in real estate if you're interested in finance or work in Honeywell or Intel. And that's about it. Right? And so I, I, I learned a new industry. I learned online, you know, so it's all research and media, you know, videos, newsletters. Um, yeah. I've been with, you know, I've been in this industry for 13 years now, which is crazy. Uh, that must be getting old, but uh, investors alley is the company I'm with now. And basically since day one at investors alley, I have been using market chameleon, which is, Crazy. I mean, I found it about the same time I got hired. So I've literally been using, uh, you know, Market Chameleon for six plus years uh, with pretty much all of my newsletter, video products, and everything. So it's, it's you know, I couldn't do it without it. Basically, <laughs> yeah, that that is awesome. I'm putting a link in the YouTube chat to Jay's uh, location on Investor Alley. Uh, it's uh, and you do you do a daily 
video or live show coffees and condors, correct? Or is that, that something you know, still- you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because things change so much that probably the last time, uh, you know, I talked to you, yeah, that, that might've been the case with coffee condors. It still exists. It's kind of like a bonus offering now. I mean, it, uh, I have like three or four, four live things that I do. They're all different names, but I mean, we have gone to, um, the industry has really gone to doing like live trading sessions where the market's open and you're talking about the trades and putting on the trades that you might be whatever recommending, you know, all real time. That's kind of, that's kind of the model that we do. So I, I have a bunch of different stuff. Coffee Condors is, is just one of, you know, that, that one's like something like every other week, but I have stuff that we do, uh, uh, you know, every week now, um, we've really, we kind of embraced the zero DTE thing to some extent. Um, what I, you are know, you, uh, what are you seeing? In the, I mean, like what's going on? Cause we, we have a lot of conversations people ask and we haven't really, uh, been trading the zero days to expiration options. Like, what are you seeing in there? What do you, what are you kind of doing? Yeah. You know, it's, I, I, for the longest time, I, I didn't want to get involved because I assumed it was more like, uh, you know, lottery tickets, gambling, yeah, you know, thought too, yeah. but, uh, but, you know, there, there was a pretty, you know, for me anyways, there's a pretty meaningful research paper came out and I can't think of, of where it came from, but it was an academic paper and was basically showing that you know, I mean, we already know that all this volume was heading there, but there's actually showing some edge in in selling. Basically, people were getting, you know, destroyed buying zero, zero DT options, but the you know the selling part was, you know, but conversely, like if everyone's getting murdered <laughs> buying it, then you have to figure that you know the, the other side of that is doing quite well. I started thinking about maybe I could put together like a short term you know, something where we're looking at some analytics and selling, selling some of these really short-term options. We settled on two day options actually to give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more time, a little bit more premium and a little bit more time to like, if, if we need to, you know, Hey, this is not working. Let's just close this out or whatever. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, I basically, um, you know, look, you know, go through, uh, you know, some of these higher volatility type stuff. And I open it up and in, in market chameleon and, and I look at, uh, well, for instance, like earnings are, this is super useful around earnings, right? Like, like z- z- the, the best time for the zero DT stuff is obviously during earnings weeks. Um, you know, and, and the, the, you know, market chameleon earnings stuff is super useful for that because you can look at, you know, traditional earnings moves and, uh, kind of see if uh you know if it's priced in kind of regularly what is done over earnings then you know it might be worth selling if it's if it's some crazy different pricing then maybe you avoid it or maybe you conversely you say hey maybe that's an opportunity normally <laughs> normally this thing prices for a 10% move it's pricing for a 20% move you know is is the market ex- accepting expecting something or is it just you know, so I, you know, so there's a qualitative aspect to it, but it's been pretty good. I mean, we've only done this for six trades, six weeks now or something like that. And we're like five out of six, you know? Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting to, I like this stuff with, with, you know, I definitely like this stuff with the high win rates. Obviously the key is avoiding when you lose, avoiding the big losses and that sort of thing. But I mean, I, th- I think it's an interesting it's it, it, it's an interesting area to explore. I mean, people love to trade. I think that's the bottom line, right? Like when when I started asking my people what you know, uh, what they wanted to do, um, you know, I have you know a, a good, nice, big, loyal subscriber base, and I and I and I ask them all the time, like, what are you guys interested in? What do you want to do? Uh, you know, because I think this product is getting stale. <laughs> you know, we're not, you know, we're not doing terrible. We're not doing great, but I feel like we can you know, like, what do you want to do? We want to trade more. We want to do shorter term trades. I mean, that was constantly the feedback I'm getting. So part of it is people just like to trade, you know, honestly, it's just, it's more fun. So, I mean, you have to, there, there is a fun aspect to, to trading. I mean, I've been in it for most of my life. I mean, it's, I, I get it. Right. So, yeah. So when you're, when you're doing this, are you looking at options naked or do you, 
or even with the two days, are you looking to do spreads? How are you looking at it? Yeah. So that's a great question because if I, if, if, if there was, you know, no constraints on, you know, what, what you could do, if everyone had equal access and equal dollar amounts that I would definitely be doing put spreads, right. I'd definitely be selling put spreads, but you know, it's one thing I found is that it's, a lot more challenging than I would have guessed for to get people into margin accounts. Right. And, you know, and it's kind of goofy because you should, I feel like you should be able to do credit spreads with a cash account if, if you have enough cash in there, but you know, they obviously, obviously that's not a thing. You need a margin account to do credit spreads. I found over the years that convincing people to open margin accounts and, and to jump through the hoops to get there was really difficult. Uh, so what I did instead is everything I do, you can do in a cash account. And in order to make that more affordable, I, I just do stocks $15 and under, and they're all cash secured. So, you know, it's someone's got a thousand dollars, whatever, laying around 1500 laying around, they can do these trades each week. That, that was my whole thing is like, I wanted to try to get as many people as possible, be able to do it. And, and fortunately there's enough stuff with a lot of these really active, you know, AI, Bitcoin, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to talk about the, 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 the flavor of the moment, a lot of that stuff is 15 and on dollar under stocks anyway. So most doesn't really, you know, doesn't really limit the, the selection that much by doing it that way. Yeah, no, it, it is funny. You mentioned AI. I was speaking to a friend this morning and, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning has been around for decades. Right. And now it's, you know, and it's thanks to ChatGPT, I guess Microsoft. You know, it's it's people can really touch it right now. Mm -hmm. You can you can ask for help uh, creating an email with you put in the specific whatever whatever it is, right? So now it's seems way more interesting. You read that like lawyers, their jobs are going to be eliminated. You know, programmers are going to you know. So it's it's in everyone's mind and space and. You know, and now they're talking about it relative to stocks, Microsoft, Tesla, Google, uh, Meta, uh, Pelantier. I mean, I don't know how many other AI companies there are out there, but um, it's certainly being promoted. And I'm, you know, you well, I was just looking at some of the upside that, you know, the, the skews in uh, all these stocks I just mentioned this morning. And, you know, what people are willing to pay for the calls right now is... Uh, really interesting right relative yeah, to the yes book. it's yeah. um it's yeah, a, nvidia for example man that thing yeah there's another one i didn't yeah. i mean and, yeah no it's it's incredible uh so are you seeing people trade in the short terms in those stocks i mean is that what's that because it's the flavor of the month year whatever it's like yeah. those are things you can look for opportunities in yeah, I mean, you know, again, not not like what I'm personally doing because yeah. I'm trying to keep in this cheaper stuff. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, although, you know, honestly, like when, when people send me interesting stuff about zero DTE, a lot of times it's like you, you look at spy and it's unbelievable. You'll see like 700,000 options, you know, trade in one strike in a day. Right. I mean, um, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, uh, you familiar with Jem Carson? He's pretty big on Twitter. Does a yeah. lot of the dealer positioning. Yeah, um, I was talking to him the other day, and 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 we were talking about the same thing. And he's, you know, I mean, a lot of it is is institutional flow, which is interesting. Like, so apparently, like, and so I'm sure this is true with like the well, the you know, the Nvidia's and stuff of the world. I don't think they have um, not at least not. I don't look at the expensive stuff that much anymore. It doesn't really fall into any of my services, but. I don't think any of those have launched dailies, right? I mean, everything, I mean, the only way you could do that would be on a Friday um, for most of these single stocks. I mean, it's, it's all uh spy QQQ or the, or the big indexes. Right. So, um, I, you know, that's possible. Like I don't look at the stuff. It's possible that I I'm, you know, I'm losing my mind and they've all launched. No, you're, you're days, probably but, right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but like I haven't looked at an NVIDIA option forever because like I'm not going to trade that stuff. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, but the in the in the, you know, the ETFs, they the stuff trades like crazy. And I, you know, I think it's actually more efficient hedging. Right. I mean, it's like people used to do the 30 day hedges. It's not like I mean, 
there's all this volume in the zero DTE, but it's also going down. This is what, what Gem and I were talking about. It's also going down in the 30 days. So it's not like it's not like this is a necessarily a net gain for option trading. It's just a, it's more of a shift. So the longer day stuff is, you know, longer day being like even a month or two, it's like is not is going away and it's appearing in these dailies because, you know, you know, apparently it it is a safer, smarter way to hedge by doing that. So people who normally would have dumped a lot more money on, on longer term hedges are now just doing it on a daily basis. So that's pretty interesting to me uh, because it can change the dynamics, which reminds me, you just, I was messing around. You launched a, a, a a new product as part of market chameleon. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, You uh, actually D surprised me last week. I had no uh, idea that it was (laughs) going out, but yeah. So have you used that at all? Yeah, I was messing with it actually over the weekend um, because, you know, that's exactly the sort of thing that like some of these, you know, sophisticated algo shops do, right? They they have, you know, we were talking about machine learning. They have, they have machines that are analyzing that stuff and maybe spitting out some opportunities here. We're doing it a little bit more manually um, where you're just, you know, finding stuff that you trade and comparing it in there. But you know, that is what these, you know, what this, that's a, a lot of what some of these like higher frequency algo trading shops are doing. They're finding these little mispricings based on relative, you know, like, you know, what is uh, NVIDIA doing compared to SPY on Fridays? And for whatever reason, we don't know what that reason is. It could be dealer positioning. It could be, you know, whatever, like people with big positions doing this and that. But for whatever reason, let's say NVIDIA trades, you know, Five uh, percent more than spy on a Friday. Well, that's that's a mispricing. Now, eventually, like people see that and it goes away. Yeah, we only but work for the next fri- five Fridays, right? Yeah, no, right, exactly. But it's there. I mean, that's real yeah. stuff, right? And I'll say a lot of that stuff gets arbitraged away by the machines, but they can only operate in really the liquid stuff, right? So this is a great opportunity to uh, to find, you know, maybe some of these. Um, you know, less lower market cap stuff that that the big players can't touch because there's just, you know, there's not enough liquidity. They would they would by doing placing even one trade, they would move the market too much Change to make it work. Yeah. But you know, you know, we can do that, right? Like, like you know, if you if you're buying one lots or five lots or ten lots, like there's opportunity in those things, and and so th- this is like the first thing I've seen really available to you know, the retail type trader that could actually do it. So it's super cool. Uh, I was, I've messed around with it for like an hour or so uh, this past weekend. And it's really neat. So Dimitri always with those surprises. <laughs> that's I, Yeah. You know, that's funny that you didn't even know it was coming out because I'm like, Whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, he's been playing around with it for a bit. I, I mean, it was a, you know, he, he launched it to the community and literally I had no idea it was, it was being launched and it, you know, <laughs> and he, and he, you know, he, he, People, I mean, he responds to the community and people have been asking, like, like your community was asking you, right? So he, he created something that he thought would be helpful. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it will change and we may find other things. Listen, anything you think could be beneficial, definitely uh, drop us an email. Any yeah. Anyone that's support yeah. at marketchameleon.com. Jay, you don't need that, obviously. You can go. <laughs> but, you know, email and uh, anything you see that may be off with the new features or anything you think could be beneficial with these shorter term options, uh, you know, would be helpful and could help the entire community, uh, which is always, you know, I think that's one thing that's pretty interesting about Mark Chameleon is uh, we do listen to every email and uh, we get lots of them. That doesn't mean we can add any feature, right? Or we do get a lot of People ask for certain things to be changed in screeners or uh, adjusted and, you know, every, everything that's done, there's a significant cost. So it has to, right. you know, you have to weigh the cost and the benefit and, you know, we would have to take our developers off certain things and just maintaining the site, you know, is, is, is a big undertaking. So uh, anyways, I do appreciate you like the new feature and keep us posted on, on your thoughts. So I am, I, I did look at, uh, so do you, do you recommend, you mentioned SPY and the indexes. Do you do anything with your uh, community in those z- zero days to expiration options? Uh, or not, is that not yet. players that it's not really used yeah. touching? 
Yeah. I mean, you know, not, not, yeah, not yet. Most only because um, it's like, like, again, I, I, I feel, and, and I could be wrong and maybe people are, are, you know, more easily swayed into getting margin type accounts, but, but cause I haven't really tried it in a while, but I, I really try to do everything I can around cash-based accounts, which is tough when you're dealing with the index, because like, you can't even, you know, you think about like spy and let's just use 400 to make it simple. Like if you want to do one cash secure put one covered call, you're talking about $40,000, right? I mean, in a cash account. So, you know, you really, you can only do spreads um, in a cash account. So, I mean, yeah, maybe you could do something like a calendar spread or something like that. Um, uh, but I, you know, uh, so pretty rare. I mostly, I use it and, and actually, you know, this is one of the primary things I'm using Mark Chameleon for is, is I use it to, for, spy is my analysis so that that's what i used to analyze the market so when we're talking about volatility i'm bringing up the implied volatility page the skew page on market chameleon i'm doing this like multiple times a week and 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 it's in my all my videos like you, you'll find me like looking through the spy analysis on on market chameleon because you know it's it's right and it, it's probably the best way to look at at market analytics right um I mean, you could do it in SBX, you can do it in SPY. It's basically the same thing. Um, but talking about, uh, sp- speaking about constraints, like, you know, uh, you know, one thing that that you, you don't necessarily see is like a lot of analysis on something like SPX because the CBOE charges an arm and a leg for that data, right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, um, another reason why I think SPY is like, like a way better thing to look at because why would you, you know, pay whatever amount of money the CBOE is asking for, you know, to get their daily data when you can basically get the other stuff for free. So, or for cheap, right. I mean, but, Yeah, no, uh, we've actually thought, cause we've had a lot of people do ask for the SPX mm. and it is, you know, obviously very close with SPY to get the same type of look at the market and what the ball is doing. Right. But uh, people do want the SPX. It's it is. In, I mean, it is something we've debated internally uh, doing. But that is nice to hear that you do. You know, use SPY, and we do offer it at a very reasonable price. I mean, you can't get the type of analytics I think on volatility and in the market. You know, any other place on the internet other than. Or chameleon, but yeah, obviously, no, I, sure. I have a vested interest. So. Yeah, no, no, I, I. I I don't have a vested interest and I completely agree. Right? <laughs> you know, it's um, I mean, I have vested interest in that, you know, we're friends, but yeah. that's, you know, that's, um, and I've been, you know, and I've been. Yeah. Know, but our, our, and that, that being said, our friendship has developed around the growth of both of our services in the marketplace. We are, you, you had reached out to us because you were using it. Right. And you right. asked right. questions and then we found out that you were actually, you know, writing about the products and, you know, seeing things in the market. And we did have a, a background that was very similar, almost identical, though you were in Chicago and we were in Philadelphia, New York. Uh, it, uh, well, we, we, it's an, it's a wonderful friendship and I'm, you know, glad we're still both, you know, above the ground, uh, <laughs> both have younger, younger family. Well, mine are now, I think my youngest, well, I know my youngest is about to go to middle school. I forget your your children's ages are. Uh, that's that's the same. Yeah, yeah, my um my youngest is is going to be seventh grade, and my my oldest is going to be high school. So it's yeah. I'm, I'm officially done with elementary school as of this year, which is yeah. So am I actually. That's my, great. My youngest <laughs> is done with elementary school. It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing how fast it goes, right? Because we both got in this business really at the same time. Uh, changed you know where what we were doing and it goes by so fast it's uh <laughs> it's awesome but listen it's uh any last words for the chameleon community it's almost 9 30 i know it's not uh it's not a market day which i really appreciate you getting on because i thought today was going to be a we were going to have <laughs> some mark market news to look at or something and i'm still glad you came on and we were able to do this and uh uh it's always a pleasure being on with you jay i really do appreciate yeah. it we, we oh, could no. do a, a show in the next couple months if you want to do something on the shorter term options. That that'd be great, but you know, no pressure. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know where to find me. I'll, I'll be yeah. around um, as always, you know, appreciate the invite and um, yeah, just happy to happy to be a part of the chameleon family. Yeah, no, and you definitely are. And uh, we love having you on, Jay. And you have a great day. Enjoy Juneteenth to the Chameleon community. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate everyone who is watching. Uh, you can email support at Market Chameleon if anytime if you uh, see things that you want maybe changed in the Chameleon. That doesn't mean they're going to happen or added. Hopefully added, not changed. But uh, let us know. And Jay, again, one last time, where can people reach out to you if uh, they want to touch base with uh, Jay Sola? Uh, just, uh, you know, you can check it in investors alley.com has got, uh, you know, everything I'm doing these days. Um, and, uh, there are ways that from there that you can, you can contact me or, or customer service will forward anything to me from, from there. So that's probably the, the easiest way to do it. Perfect. And I did put the link to Jay's investor alley information on the site. And all you have to do is type in Jay Soloff on youtube and you'll see a bunch of his uh very informative videos as always jay thank you you have a great holiday today and a good week everyone thanks for joining have a safe day and i will see you tomorrow with another special guest uh dimitri is on vacation for the next two weeks which is awesome for him all right jay <laughs> have a great day